What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here. Welcome on back. So, from the hub, it's time to go to our next zone, and that is Cathedral of Sacred Blood, and then on over to the Gated Room. As you have probably already guessed, we're going to be going through the next wing door. This will take us to the Ashen Caverns. Now, even though this is a wing door like the previous one, you do have to go to this area second. Um, this area just isn't opened up prior, so you have to do the ridge first. And obviously, if you're just following along with this walkthrough and not playing the game yourself, you know, a lot of this stuff is explained in the cutscenes. But, as I mentioned quite a few episodes ago, if I added in all the cutscenes, uh, this walkthrough would basically double in length. So, not doing that. Looking at this in this lighting, it's almost like a, it's almost like like Doom Guy armor. I kind of look green too, so I'm like Doom Guy. Anyway, so run on up ahead, and that is now opened, of course, and we'll get our missile. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned at the end of uh, at the end of the last episode, I went ahead and farmed up some. MG212, uh, literally just kept killing the boss in that depth, took three kills, and now we have both Ice Barrage as well as Frost Weapon Inherited, so go ahead and put those on. Uh, we really want the Frost for the next part. Actually, you know, let's just put both of these on. Level Barrage How is always fun. Proceed? So anyway, go around here first, and we're going to pick up our... Stop that. Oh my god. You and the inhibit. I said stop. Alright. So we got our vestige part C. And now we're going to continue on. And we get a cutscene. And we're going to skip it. Then uh, up ahead, we're going to take a left at the split. This will lead around to a stamp. Alright, you see the climber right there. Even though these guys are big purples, like the ones we fought in the previous zone, you'll probably notice they are quite a bit beefier than the previous enemies that we fought. Alright, uh, so we got that. Uh, returning back, let's see, there's fireproof and venom vaccine. There's our fireproof, Nothing there's our venom vaccine. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this room, some enemies up above, but we're gonna go there's left first. A bunch of slimes. There we go, kill them. Grab the condensed law shard, and then around the corner. Artemis Vesta J. Okay, right. Such dark um, actually, we'll go this way first. Watch your step. You can go either way. This is a pretty big room. Watch your footing. Go up here first, just so we can. Uh, take care of this guy. He tries to ambush you otherwise, so it's like might as well knock him out now. Yo, go get her. Clean <laughs> steel. That, and then we're gonna go up top. Um, another thing, I, I did switch up, since we're being a lot more aggressive now, I've switched up to weapon drain rating as opposed to block rating. Uh, if you're still playing, like, really defensively, block rating and drain rating is great. It just allows you to drain more in off of blocks, and obviously the Zweihander is a fantastic block-oriented weapon. 
But if you're being hyper aggressive, you'll want to have a regular drain rating on just to pull in some stuff. You don't have to use it. I just, you know, I like casting, so that helps to make things casting easier. Anyway, um, so where am I at in notes here? Most times around the corner. Iker Coag, MJ210. Looks like I missed a drop from something. Let's go grab that. Heading there now. Probably just a lost shard. Yep. Did you find something good? I did. Right, so we're gonna go up top. I go along the wall. Sorry, I was looking at something. I'm gonna pop a heel real quick. Uh, that's the path for progression. We're gonna go this way first to get the missile as well over as the thingy here. that's over there. Here, and then I want to say, yeah, there you are. This is my home. I'm the only one who lives here now. Hold it, so yourselves so come. This is. The place. <laughs> Get them. Grab that. Him away. Is there another? God damn it! I didn't grab it before I dropped down. <clears throat> That's fine. We got to go around anyway, and it'll bring us back. Uh, so we go up here. Uh, it's the barrier up top. Well, grab Carmilla. the missile. Grab the Artemis D. Little hyper on this recording. Just got done with a big old lunch. I honestly, ate so much Taco Bell. It's it's disgusting. Had a uh, those little wraps and then a quesarito. And got the blood tonic real fast. And then a. Uh, Trap Supreme and two of the little Cinnabon things. So we got no, we got Artemis D, so Survivor B, Rotten Mistle, we got that. Continue path on the other path for item. Space -like Big room with enemies. Last, Some steel A in Time the corner. Increase in that Iker count. Grab the Queen Steel. Grab that. Alright, we're gonna go right. Should be. If I can hit you with the barrage, I can't. We'll just wait for it to come no. down. Ah, it still hit me. All right, pop this open for huge hammer, which this thing's actually really good. If you if you do want to use hammers, um, blood out the charged attack on this thing is a multi hit. Bum, 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 bum. That does a lot of damage. I'll use this for a bit. Bad anyway. You're at twelve. Okay, yeah, I can get by with you. Fine. This isn't the best Grab this. This shiny, there's a couple more guys here. Those are whiffing, but don't matter because I was over here clapping cheeks. All right, and this middle path right here, we're gonna take this up and grab this, and then around for a missile. Okay, so we're gonna drop down. We can ignore all the other stuff. Up. We want to head on up, and we're going to fight our way past all of these baddies. Um, let's see. Center paint. Let me scroll notes here. Go. 
All right, so we want to get an MJ212. And there's a step booster. This is a bad place. And then an enemy that's going to stand there and let us boop it in the face. And then we go around for a regen activation. No, extension. We found something no, valuable. It's a regen factor. That's the important thing here. So we now have seven heals. Head back. Come on out into a big open room. Now the first thing we're gonna do here is actually run to grab the missile. So go this way. The lost are There's gonna be a couple of people kind of hiding around corners and whatnot. And uh, this area is kind of, kind of tricky in the sense that there's a lot of potential fall areas, and that's the main reason I recommend coming and grabbing the missile first. Okay, so leaving the missile, we're gonna kill this thing. Alright, um, we'll kill the guardian that's over here, as well as get part of SB. And after the boss, this is actually the door you're going to go through. You need a dog tags to open it, and you get those from the boss. But that's the path to continue. Um, let's see. Okay, then head back to the room entrance. Survivor A near the second block. Thank you. And I very, very much recommend you either have Io or Mia as you go through this area, because you have all these little things that are going to be uh, spitting stuff at you. You're not going to really want Mia for the boss, but she'll definitely help in this area just to knock out uh, the crap that you got to fight while you're here. Around. This block. Another one's going to show up behind us. Dead. Steel. Something good? Austria. Full spices. And that's a drop. That's a drop. Oh, pick it up. Okay. Um. Let's see. You. We have a two twelve warp blade and chest and evasion. So two twelve. Uh, Warp Blade is the first new greatsword we've seen in a while. This thing has some blood damage on it. It's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't put it ahead of kind of what we're using, but I will uh, show the moveset of that in a moment here. After we get rid of all this crap. Be a double. What blades actually what this guy's using? All right, so just to go through it very quickly, because it is a decent sword in some circumstances. Um, but it's mostly slash damage, has a nice cross moveset similar to our uh, Queen Slayer. Uh, we have a little blast it can make, and then the charged one is actually really interesting with this. Charge. You can see it'll do multiple hits, and those are all considered blood damage as they go on up, so... Um, <laughs> against bigger bosses, you can definitely do some work with it. But uh, the raw end damage isn't going to look as high because it has blood. But if you were to use that and then enchant it with blood and run a, a build kind of how we're running and maybe a path to glory, you can get some crazy damage. Anyway, uh, going back this way. Uh, let's see. Shard on the ground. Black blood and chest. So grab the shard. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fuckner. I feel like I never use this thing. Black Blood Liberator, uh, decent. Let's see if I remember correctly. I want to say it's a decent uh, caster one. I killed the spitter that's over there. Finish this guy. Certainly use Grab this. the aged brandy, um, right? Aged brandy, and then the survivor core right here. All right, and then we're gonna go up and around to the left for survivor part C, and then we are ready to go. It's really hoping to get a double there. It's fine though. Kill you. Stop it. All right. And we are set. <clears throat> so I am going to rest very quickly here. Um, the boss is right through here, and we're going to talk about him while I run back to the missile. So up next, we are fighting something called the Gilded Hunter, and... Honestly, this fight won't be too bad, um, but a lot of folks do consider him somewhat of a skill check enemy. Uh, he is fairly quick. His phase two, he gets a lot faster. He's kind of, he's basically like a blood knight. So he's going to be using blood damage. Uh, he has a halberd. He's resistant to both blood and fire. Uh, there's some AoEs he does and like multi-spin type attacks that you're better off just dodging out of the way of. Similar to most bosses, he has a phase two that'll kick off right around when he's halfway health. Um, but if you're playing right, you can easily burst this guy down and kill him if you're quick enough. So I'm just going to get my IQ count up a little bit to make all of the uh, pre-boss buffing easier. Very nice relaxed run back to the boss, kind of as you're seeing here. One spitter, one enemy. And then there he is. So we're going to be also using the Flashing Fang uh, Merciless combo that we did previously. Uh, as for weapon buffs, um, as I mentioned, he's resistant to fire and blood. And then my understanding is he's supposed to be kind of neutral. So you're better off not really running elemental buffs here and instead going for just uh, pure big damage. So. You on, you on, and we are good to go. So we're gonna wait till we get a stun and then get a double buff up. This is a Wii that he likes to do. Phase two is gonna start. And you wanna stay right up on this guy. If you start backing up, he'll begin charging back and forth between you. Sorry, Io. Didn't mean for you to go down there. Anyway, after knocking him out, we will get another core, and this is going to provide us with the Dark Knight class, or Blood Code. Uh, Dark Knight's pretty good. It's a kind of strength hybrid mage type class. They focus around halberds. All in all, definitely a fun class to play as, and if halberds are your thing, you're in luck, because this thing is all about it. Um, so after that, to rest at the missile... Then uh, we're actually going to teleport right back to the Ruins Missile. Our buddy Gustav is here, and he has 
They're being hunted I... here. The Arachnid Grotto for us. So we're going to take that. Um, let's see. We're also going to go back to the crypt over here. And talk to him. Um, as I mentioned before, if you want to get some pure blood, you can run on down to Karen, and there should be some pure blood rating. Rating. God, words are hard today. Waiting. Let's check. Let's see, there is. I mean, well, we could have done it after him. Um, but yeah, go over to here. Else we have a quick side quest we're gonna knock out in the natural cavern depths, and then I think I'm gonna save Arachnid Arachnid Grotto for a different episode. Mainly because of the fact that uh, it doesn't take too long, so I'm gonna wait until we have I mean in general I think I think doing the uh, the double depths episodes tend to work the best. Because a depth usually takes anywhere from ten to fifteen minutes to complete, so keeping two per episode works out well. Run on in here, get yourself some pure blood in case of emergency. And then we're gonna vivify her because I'm lazy. And the last thing we want to do is hop over to the natural cavern depths for a side quest involving Richard. should only take a moment uh, but just run on up talk to him and I'll be like oh I'm looking for a place to go but there's something in my way and then you know the trip kill the fatty is he a side quest ever great I and we're almost to the last part of his chain as well, uh, but we got to make a little bit more progress before that'll show on up. So, teleporting back to the home base real fast, and we're going to take a look at some of the stuff we acquired via Dark Knight before wrapping up this episode. Um, some other stuff. Let's go over to IO real fast. We have a bunch of new vestiges. As a reminder, you should be doing this as you play, but every now and then just swing on over and talk to her and pick up all the stuff. Watch the cutscenes if you want the lore, skip them if you just want the skills. And even doing this, uh, you know, if, if it's unclear, Most doing this doesn't just outright give access to stuff. You still need to purchase the skills and then either inherit them by playing with that blood code or use MJs to unlock them, but doing this will essentially give you access to the codes that were previously unavailable and kind of fuzzied out, like Bloodsucking Blades, which is one of the better buffs in the game. Grants a very significant increase to the amount of drain on your attacks, so if you're the type of player that likes to use weapon abilities or is constantly using skills or what have you, uh, blood sucking blades is a very very nice thing to work into your build and survivor stuff for playing that mastery and with all these if you were wanting to play a bayonet build this is where a bayonet build really takes off uh, mainly because the weapon masteries are so important to weapon oriented builds and up until now, you know, all you really had access to is great swords. Yeah. You got hammer with Fion. We had one-handed sword with Prometheus. Um, but with where we're at now, you should now have access to halberds as well as bayonets from having all of Mia's stuff in addition to Dark Knight. So Come this in. is the point in the game where it really kind of opens up and you can run with whatever weapon type you prefer as we have all of our masteries available. You have it. And I should have one more. Scout A. Or I got Scout B. Just 
this one. I think Scout B is down in one of the depths, but we'll get that later. Uh, I'm also going to take a look at some of the skills I would suggest inheriting. Also sitting on a hefty 300,000 haze. Okay, uh, so looking over at gifts. Uh, Dark Knight, we have access to Blood Weapon which is a good one to max on out for enemies that are weak to blood. Uh, the spike. Spike abilities are essentially long-ranged uh, nukes that are aligned with light. So if you want to do some spell damage, kind of how we are with barrages, spikes would give you a long-range option. Somatic zeal, not bad, giving a temporary increase to strength and dex. Uh, all in all, it's kind of mediocre, but halberd mastery. And then chariot rush is... Uh, one of the strongest damaging abilities in the game. So a very nice ability. Uh, one thing that is worth probably picking up is going to be Flame Protection. The next zone that we're going to be going to has a lot of fire, so Flame Protection can be quite nice. Um, you can get some 212s, but you can obviously farm something in the depths for that. Looking over at Survivor, um, as you see, we have Leak Resistance and Leak Removal. These are both very nice if you're playing as a caster. Uh, treasure Tracker, of course, helping you to locate things that you've missed. And over in Artemis, we have most of our stuff unlocked now. So if you're a mage, Freezing Roar gives you a Ice variant of your freezing ability. We, of course, have Dex will power up passive uh, Bayonet Mastery if you're using Bayonets. And then, as I already mentioned, Blood Sucking Blades, just all around a fantastic spell. Uh, so, actually, and then, uh, well, we never looked at Isis. Um, to be honest, Isis is just good all around. If you're playing as a mage, this is going to give you an extra six Iker. Fourfold Verdict is one of the strongest nukes in the game. Blast Bolt is one of the strongest speedy moves in the game. And then there's your Plasma Roar, so you should have access to all four Roars. Uh, but anyway, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, my next step, I'm going to go down into the depths and kill the uh, fake successor of the Breath two more times so that I have the stuff to inherit Flame Board, as it will help considerably in the next zone. Um, we have Arachnid Grotto on the table as well, but prior to knocking that out, we're going to actually go into the next zone, and then as I mentioned, we will do a double episode of Depths. So, you can do Arachnid Grotto if you want now, but I would suggest waiting. So, thanks for coming on by, and I'll catch you guys soon enough with more.